Hey everyone, Roddy here at Klebstack, and today I'm gonna to show you an app that will allow you to train Flux LoRa's without much hassle or complexity. It's called Flux, Flux Gym, and was created by Cocktail Peanut to make training LoRa's locally for Flux dead simple. And it actually works very well, at least in my first few initial tests that I've done. It I did some initial tests with a 2070 Super with eight gigabytes of VRAM, and while it seemed to be working, it was very slow. Uh, I did not want to wait, so I didn't go any further with that one. So eight gigabyte VRAM might be possible from my understanding, but do expect it to take some time and make sure you have plenty of RAM available as well. Uh, I've used it to train a couple Loras, uh, 3080 with 10 gigabytes and a 4070 with 12 gigabytes, and they both worked without an issue but do not expect those to be extremely fast. So when using with a 12 gigabyte GPU or less, you just select the 12 gigabyte option in the interface. And from what I've heard, it may work on AMD, but I have no way of testing that. So first we wanna to go to the GitHub page for Flux Gym. Um, uh, Cocktail Peanut set this up. Now, there's a couple different options here. You can manually install this cloning it and everything else. I'm not gonna be covering that. I'm gonna be doing the one-click install. I think that's what most people will be doing. It's much easier in my opinion. But if you know how to do all this sort of stuff, you you know, the install manually, you can do it. I just don't like going through the hassle myself. If you don't have Pinocchio installed, all you need to do is go over to pinocchio.computer and we're gonna click on the download and it'll give you the install files and everything here. So I can just click on that. I'm going to go ahead and I already have it downloaded. Then you're just going to unzip the file and we're going to install using the installer. Now you probably would get a warning like you'll see here. And then you just click on my info and run anyway. I've already installed it and I'm just reinstalling it at this point just to go through the steps. I'm not going to get that message. It's asking where you want to install Pinocchio. Now, I myself prefer to install mine on my F drive because that's my extra drive that I use and that's where I prefer it. And I'm just going to put it in the primary folder here. And I prefer the dark theme, so that's what I'll be using here. I go ahead and I hit save. And now it should just set everything up to use that folder. So now when I go into my F drive, I'm gonna have the Pinocchio folder here, and that's what it will look like. And once it installs, it's gonna start install it in there. So we're on here. Now there's two options on how to do this. One, you can you just go to discover, and then you can find it. Um, it's actually pretty much right at the top. Or the other option is you can click on the link here, one click install, and then you can just click on that, and it should, if we click on that, it's open in Pinocchio, boom, it opens. These are all the requirements. Now I do already have some stuff installed. You may not, you may have to go through this a couple times. The first time I did it, it installed a bunch of stuff, but some stuff didn't get installed. So I had to do it again. Now, this is probably gonna take a while because when it does install everything, it goes through and it downloads all the models and everything else separately. I don't know if there's a way to use models that you already have. I haven't looked into that, you probably could. The way this automatically works is it gonna it's gonna download everything into that folder that you need. You shouldn't have to download anything at that point. It should handle everything that you're gonna require to run this. And depending on your uh, network connection and everything for downloading, this is definitely can take a while. I think when I set mine up, it was like 20 minutes for the whole install and downloading and setting everything up. Okay, so if that happens and not everything is installed at this point, just go ahead, hit install again, and it should finish up and do the rest. Now we're all set, everything is um, good to go on that end. You're gonna get the option of what to save that as. We're just gonna leave it at the default. Go on download, and at that point, it should go ahead and now install Flux Gem now that it's installed all the requirements for it ahead of time, uh, which is what we just did. You can go in here and customize anything. I'm not in, not gonna customize anything on here. 
We're just going to go with the default install. I'll just go ahead and install that, which should bring up this dialog, which goes through the whole install process. And this is where it will download all the models and it will set everything up that it needs to set up. As I said, this does take up a decent amount of space, but it does everything for you. So you'll see it now in our Pinocchio folder and the API folder. We now have our fluxgym.git folder. And that's where it's gonna put everything in here. And our outputs will be in this folder here. And this definitely will be impacted by how fast your network is, because this is where it's gonna be downloading a lot of the models. I do know if you already have the models downloaded and in the proper folders, it doesn't download them, but you wanted to figure that out and put them in those folders. I suppose you could probably go ahead and do that. Okay, and once everything's set up, this is the screen you're gonna have. This is your Flux Gym. Now, I wanna give you a quick rundown. I'm gonna run a quick um, Laura training on here, although it does take a few hours for depending on what you have for a setup. So, and I'm not gonna get into all the details of the best practices and everything else, because I'll admit, I'm not an expert when it comes to training, especially on Flux. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna train a character Laura for this one. And this one is gonna be uh, Tigo, a goat. And that'd be this guy right here. That's what we're gonna be training. So that was my goat. He passed away earlier this year, but I have a lot of images of him. So I figured that would be a good one. I trained um, a Laura about over a year ago with him. Didn't come out the greatest, but that was probably my first one that I ever did. So I figured, eh, why not make a new one? and see how this comes out. So I have a whole bunch of images. You know, there's a lot of debate on how many images, things like that. So I just went with, I don't know, I have uh, 53 in here that I'm using. And I've gone ahead and cropped them down a little bit. You don't need to worry about the sizes because this will automatically resize your images and everything else. So but the first thing you wanna do in here, once you have this set up, is give it a name. This is what it's gonna name the file, basically. Then you're gonna need a trigger word, something that's uncommon and not an actual word. Otherwise you could end up with eh, some mix-ups. I've had that in the past where I used something that I thought was unique and it turned out it was actually a bicycle. So when I prompted for it, I'd end up with the bike brand. So always consider that. I find a lot of times using a number and con you know, connect, you know, with the letters as well is gonna give you something very unique. So for this one, I'm just gonna put Tigo with a three. That's what I'm gonna use. And that will basically be the word that it prepends on, you know, all the um, the captions on. Now, the other thing you're gonna do, check off as next is the VRAM section. Now, if you have plenty of VRAM, you wanna check off that you have more because it's gonna run faster. The scripts will be tuned for those specific. So if you have less than 12 gigs, you want to select the 12 gigs. Now I have tested this with 12, 10, and eight gigabytes. I didn't fully test it with an eight gigabyte card. I got it running, it was going, but it was a 2070 Super and it was taking quite a bit of time and probably would have taken a day or so. And I wasn't waiting for that. So, but it did seem to be working just extremely slow. It had 32 gigs of RAM and it was really struggling to do it, but I think it would have done it in the end. But then I put a 3080 in there with 10 gigabytes and that had no issues whatsoever. Uh, it did take a few hours because I was doing quite a few steps. I think I was doing 2200 steps total. And then on this card, the 4070, I'm running 12 gigabytes of RAM and that definitely goes faster than the 3080, but not drastically. I, I think it was probably about 30% quicker. The other things you're gonna keep in mind, your repeat trains per image, that's how many times it trains each on each image and it repeats, how many epochs you're gonna be doing. I wouldn't put these in here, change those yet until after you drop your pictures in. So I'm gonna drag my pictures over into here. So I'll drop all my pictures in. Now at this point, you're gonna notice it fills in the training steps because this these two factors with the number of pictures calculates how many training steps there'll be. So you don't edit the training steps. You're probably not gonna need 8,500 steps. I don't even really know for Flux how many is best. I've seen some people training some things for under 1,000 steps. I've seen some people need to do 3,000 steps. So I think it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error 
and it's gonna depend upon what you're doing. But I would do some digging online to find out more about what people might suggest when it comes to that. Uh, so for this one, I'm gonna do five and I'm gonna train it for, well, let's go with eight. And give me about almost 2,200 in, uh, steps for this one. I think that'll probably be enough for what my purposes is. Do keep in mind, you can always increase this. So if you wanted to, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna save every so many epochs, it's gonna save a file that you can use as a LoRa. So if you end up over training it, you can use one of the previous files instead where it wasn't trained as heavily. So do keep that in mind if you're gonna be like me and you're gonna set it overnight. If it's gonna take a few hours, why not set it to more steps because you can always dial it back and use one of the previous files that's saved along the way. Now, under the advanced options, I'm not gonna really mess with much in here. I leave everything, I've been leaving everything pretty much the defaults. The uh, learning rate was adjusted from when it first came out and this seems to work pretty good. I do change the save every N epochs. It's for every two. Um, now, if I was doing a lot up here, I'd probably do it every three or four. It just really comes down to how you can do it every one if you want. That's entirely up to you. If you have plenty of disk space, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna leave the rest of these as is. Now, the other thing, keep in mind is the size of the images. You can train it on 512 or 1024. In all honesty, I haven't seen much of a difference in the ones that I've trained so far. I mean, some people say the 1024 works better, but 512, 1024, the ones I've tried, I couldn't notice a difference. And 512 definitely uses less VRAM and it definitely trains faster. So, it might not hurt to, depending on what you're doing, to try it the 512 first, depending. Now, if you have a beefier video card and everything else, I say, why not go for the 1024? That's what I'm gonna be doing here. Now, once I have all these settings set up, everything else is all set when it comes to the images. Now, I, some people have a theory, there's a lot of different theories on how they do the captions. Sometimes for styles, they'll say, just have the trigger word or, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, add the captions for Florence too, because I find for characters and stuff like that, this works better. So once these are all set up, everything else is set up, I'm just gonna click on add AI captions. Now, once you do that, it does take a little bit of time for it to basically think, load the model and go through and do everything. So you're probably looking at a minute or so before those actually get auto captioned. Now, once it starts captioning them, usually it starts just going one by one and it starts captioning those. So now it's starting to go through and it will start captioning them. Now for this, I, as I said, I'm not an expert on the captions, but I find with these, it's got Tigo, a goat um, standing on, you know, these work very well. Now, when I go to prompt for this, I'm more than likely gonna have to use Tigo, a goat, and that'll pull it up. My experience for this one, and that's what works well. Now, once these are all done, we wanna go through, make sure everything's captioned. And it's getting there. Okay, everything is all set. So we have our data sets all set. Our step one is all set of our parameters. Step two, we've gone through, we've captioned everything. This now has been added, it didn't have it before. So this shows you the training script. So once we have everything all set here, everything's ready to good to go, we can go ahead and click on start training. And once that starts, this all goes down, it'll jump down to the bottom and start seeing uh, you know, that it's doing stuff in the background here. And we'll also see in our Flux folder in Pinocchio, we now have a Tigo the Goat data set. So in theory, you could use this just for captioning and stuff and then cancel it at this point if you wanted to train it somewhere else like civet ai now the one thing to keep in mind is once this starts it's going to be taking a little bit of time as it goes if you want to know what's happening you can usually get a pretty good idea if you bring up your task manager and bring up your gpu you can see that it's actually doing something in the background because what i found with this one at least at this moment and this could change, it could get updated to change this factor, but this um, terminal output is not gonna update on each step. It's not gonna show you as it's going through each step. 
what happens is it updates on each epoch. So once it gets through one whole epoch, it's going to update and show you everything of the progress at that point. So if you're using a slower card, especially that might take an hour or two for each epoch, then it might look like nothing's happening because this basically isn't updating. But if you go into your task manager, you're going to see activity in here. And that'll give you a pretty good idea that everything's working at this point. Um, I can see in here that it's doing something because I don't have anything else going on my computer at the moment. So obviously it's running in the background. Now, depending on what you have for a card and everything, you're gonna see a lot more usage or less usage. I know when I was running this on my 10 gigabyte card on the other system, this VRAM was pretty much maxed out most of the time. When I run it on this 12 gigabyte card, as you should see shortly here, is it doesn't completely, it did max it out pretty close there. But once it gets going and starts going through each step, it doesn't completely use it all up. It seems to be using about 10 and a half from what I noticed uh, once it starts going. Now, if you have like a 4090 with 24 gigs, gigs of VRAM, stuff like that, you're gonna be able to train these things pretty quick. I know somebody who has training them, they're training or doing full training in under an hour, um, much less than an hour, I believe. Um, especially if they're using the 512 image size instead of the 1024. As I said, on this right here with about 2200 steps with my 4070 and a 12 gig video RAM, um, I believe this usually takes probably about seven hours in all honesty for what I'm gonna be doing here. Um, I would expect roughly about seven hours. But I will say I, I tested it when it spit out and I honestly don't think I would need to necessarily do 2200 steps with this. I might actually be able to get away with half that in all honesty. Okay, so we're at the point here, I believe that it's gonna start now just going through the steps. You, like I said, we won't see those that progress at the moment but yeah so it's starting to kick in now and at this point what we should see is this thing starts to go up and down up and down up and down now if you have a slower card you're going to see that that distance between the dips um, is going to be further along and it's going to be more stretched if you have a faster card and everything then these dips will be quicker and more up and down but th th this will give you an idea as what we're seeing here at this point i've gotten to this point here and now this is just going to keep going up and down up and down and all the way through that's what i'm going to see for activity and that way i know that that's actually working and then at some point probably in about a half about 45 minutes it's going to go through and it's going to update it at that point and i'm going to see the output down here and then each one after that it's going to keep doing the same thing. Okay, now it looks like we got our first run. Oh, I'm going to turn off auto scroll. Yeah, it looks like our first epoch is done. And so we can scroll through if we want just to get an idea. These were all the steps. Uh, as I said, it doesn't update as it's going. You'll get it each these in chunks. But now I can see it's roughly going to be about seven hours from here. So a total of eight hours on this card um, with how I have it set up. If I had chosen the smaller images and stuff like that, it would be a little bit quicker. We haven't had a chance to test and compare all different variations to see how much different it would be. So, okay, and once everything's done, you should have a screen like this to show it. And usually I have a box at the bottom. Mine doesn't seem to show. But then we can go into our output folder and at that point we can get the files. You should have multiple files in here and each one will be, uh, as I had set mine to every two. So you can test out the earlier ones if you want to or just use the final one, which is what I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it into my models folder here. Go ahead and now refresh and swarm. Okay, so we can click on that. And now I've got it selected. I'm gonna just put in, let's do snowboarding. See how that works. 
Now, if you find for some reason things don't look right, it could be potentially overtrained. If you went too far, then you could use one of the previous epochs that it saved along the way, one of those files. The other option is you may not have trained it enough. So that's another thing. Now I've trained now three or four different LoRa's with this, uh, the Flux Gem. And so far it's worked pretty good. I didn't have some luck with the style when I did, but I also only trained it for about 800 steps and it was starting to work. So it just definitely needed more. I haven't really messed around too much with style LoRa's for the most part. I've done like the character ones. I've now done this one. I've done uh, Brave Little Toaster and I've done a few other ones um, for other people. If I did do a concept one as well, that worked out very well. Okay, let's see how these came out. Well, not bad overall. Uh, that one's a little bit on the odd side, but I wouldn't expect no less doing the snowboarding. Well, it definitely got his patterns correct on his face. That's without a doubt. I gotta say overall, this did a pretty good job. I think if I just do standard Tigo a goat and see how those come out just out of curiosity without doing something extreme. I'd say it did a pretty good job overall. It doesn't do well with the eyes, but see, sometimes his eyes are more round, the pupils, and, and the other ones, if we look on these, it pupils are rectangular, so it doesn't necessarily capture. That's the one thing I've noticed. It always has him with the rounder pupils, not as much as the rectangular ones, but so that's pretty much... Um, how that works, uh, Flux Gym. Well, that pretty much covers everything I have on Flux Gym at this time. I do hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, please consider hitting the like button. Don't forget, I do have a Patreon that I do share more videos and most of them are available to free members. Although all my, all my major videos are here on YouTube. I do want to thank all my supporters for any contributions to help keep the channel going because it does really make a difference. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.